Yeah. All right, so we got video. The video hopefully will, uh, you know, stay on the whole time. We'll see what happens. Let's worry about the video. We want to make sure we have the audio. All right, so again, this is a pretty, um, you have a script? Uh, I got it on my phone. So you guys went around all of these areas, and I can't wait to hear about it. And am I able to interject? And oh, of course. We're keeping you involved through the entire yeah. thing. This isn't about us. This is about you. No, no, it's about this area, right? It's about the it's area. Right. You're a major part of it. Blue Lake and Tuckerton, right? Blue Lake and Tuckerton, yeah. So um, the one thing that we try and say, too, is that we try and talk to the audience. I mean, of course, to us, too. But okay. every once in a while, we do plans over at the right mic. All right, cool. So, um, we're, so again, this is so just keeping in mind that like if we mess something up or whatever, we can do a lot of editing. If, if like maybe we say something like, oh shit, now my heart's beating really fast because I didn't mean to say that and I don't want people to think that. Like, we're, we're good. We can just yeah. apply that. Right. Yeah, it's not broadcast live. We can do some post production. I'm going to mostly be looking at that camera. Scott, you can really be looking at either one if you want. But, uh, and Valerie, probably this one's probably better um, just to get more of like, your direct yeah. face. Um, because then what we'll do, and I don't know if you watched the Tendo one, but we can go, I can cut from camera one to yeah. camera two based on who's talking. So, um, all right, we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to keep this. Light, casual, we want to learn a little bit about you too. I think that's kind of how we'll start by introducing you and learn, you know, a little bit about your background and, you know, in 90 seconds, two minutes, whatever. You know. Oh gosh, that's much your whole more life. Time than I... <laughs> your whole life in 90 seconds. So, all right. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Exploring New Jersey and the uh, big sign in the background might give it away to those who know, but we are here in Little Egg Harbor. Uh, and Tucker Dan, we have our first guest, Valerie Kilburn. Valerie, welcome. Hello, welcome. thank you. I'm very thank excited. You. And of course, as always, Scott Cummings here with us. So, um, so yeah, so we are now, you guys know that we've done a lot of stuff up in North Jersey because that's where Scott and I live. Uh, well, I met Valerie at a conference and she actually lives and works in my hometown. So we thought it would be a great start to our, I don't know, South Jersey series, I guess we'll call Summer it. Summer series, maybe. Summer, Summer series. series. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to be summer when these come out, but we recorded them in the summer. Thanks so much. <laughs> so let's kick it off, Valerie. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. Um, well, gosh, I'm not a Jersey girl, but kind of an adopted Jersey girl. Uh, I grew up in Texas and Louisiana. Uh, my mom was Cajun, born in New Orleans. And uh, at the age of 19, she took me to Switzerland to run the first privatized hospital in Switzerland. So. I had the opportunity to learn French, to study at the University of Geneva, and shortly after I lived, I married a wonderful French guy who eventually had two wonderful kids. And in the end, I moved back to America and found myself in New Jersey. And I was up in Morris County, right by where um, you live, Pete and Scott. And now I bought a vacation home down here in Mystic Island. Little Lake Harbor, and I've been here for um, been here since 2006, vacationing and full time since 2017. I built my forever home here in Mystic Island, which is the Lake Harbor. We'll talk a little bit more about that, right? Yeah. And I uh, just love it here. And I started my real estate career three years ago, three and a half years ago. Love it. Sell a lot on the water, waterfront properties, vacation homes, and I'm just very happy and super psyched to be here with you guys. Awesome. Yeah, we're happy to have you here. Like I said, when we met at the shout out to Glover U, Jeff Glover and his whole thing, right? Uh, so we met at the Glover U conference and we just, it, it's so funny. So for anyone who doesn't know, I grew up in Little Lake Harbor, right? So I'm actually born and raised a pine, right? And so a lot of people who know me up north don't know that about me. Uh, so when we connected on the boat and we had Scott and I had been doing the podcast, uh, I knew it was like I couldn't wait to come back down here and explore because you know as we talked about it, it's something that keeps pulling me back here for some reason. So Scott, this is your first first impression, first time in Little Lake Harbor, tuckered in, uh, and we'll go into what some of that is. But what is your impression now of being here? So we drove around most of the morning, uh, kind of a crash course, as I said. Like, what's your impression of, of here, in Little Lake Harbor? Yeah. So it was. Um Definitely a different experience of what I'm used to when I think of South Jersey or a shore town, so to speak. Uh, growing up, going to Long Beach Island um, every summer, I just assumed Little Lake Harbor was a town in between that and Atlantic City. 
Um, so never really even went to which it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, not wrong. But um, it's on the other side of the Barney Bay that I never ventured over to, and um, I mean we've been here four hours and kind of fell in love with it. Um, I definitely think that it's a good shore town that I personally I have a goal of buying a house down the shore eventually, and this could be a possible contender. So first visit and it's on the list. So that's always a good thing. And we barely even scratch the surface. Yeah, and I think what a lot of people don't realize is that nobody knows Little Lake Harbor or Tuckerton from anywhere else. And the fact is, is it's really a hidden diamond. It's a diamond in the rough here. Especially if you want to go to a boater, boater's community, uh, or just have a waterfront property and 10 minutes to the bay by a boat. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and I could also say a quick disclaimer on it too. It's like, you're not necessarily going to find a, a beach. I mean, we found a couple very small ones, but it's not necessarily a you know several mile strip of beaches, but you have easy access to it, mostly via boat or even 20 minutes by car. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about the dynamic, right? Because we've mentioned Little Lake Harbor and we've mentioned Tarkin. But actually, first, before we even get into that, have to give a shout out, guys. Let's have a cheers oh, here. Finelands. Uh, Finelands Brewing. Um, salute. So as I mentioned, well, let's drink first. I'm, I'm drinking blueberry. As am I. So you guys got the blueberry. I've got the 08087, which is like their flagship IPA. Which and is then, the zip code. Damn which is the <laughs> call, which is the zip code. And they also have Swamp Donkey, so don't sleep on the Swamp Donkey. It's very good. Um, so Pineland's Brewing, this place is great. They're they're kind of, they're not far off the parkway. So actually whenever mm -hmm. Ashley and I kind of are maybe coming from Wildwood or South or whatever, uh, we always pull off here and pick up at least a six pack, probably kind of drink or whatever. So let's get into a little bit of like the dynamic and how the towns work, right? Because we've thrown out a couple names already. We've thrown out uh, Mystic Island, Little Lake Harbor, Tuckered Inn, right? We've got Osborne Island. So Valerie, take us through a little bit of like what that dynamic looks like, right? Tuckered Inn and Little Lake Harbor are, are two different towns, right? Yes, they are. I mean, it, it started in Tuckerton um, by a Mr. Tucker. Um, it was originally, if I may say, um, this area was originally um, lived by the Lenape. Mm. The La Lenape Indians first came here. And um, that was in 1698. But there were already Dutch sailors and other sailors that came down the eastern seaboard and they actually would come into the Little Egg Harbor area and funny enough, it was named after the Dutch who in 1614 saw all these gold nests and they had eggs in them so they call them Little Egg. <laughs> that's how I got the name? Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah, actually Little that's Egg. funny. Yeah, and so that's cool. And um, so Little Egg Harbor and Tuckerton are adjoining under the same zip code. And within Little Egg Harbor, there's a lagoon um, community, community called Mystic Island. And there's also another one called Osborne Island. I think your uncle lives on Osborne Island. Uh, he's in Tuckerton. Oh, he's in Tuckerton. Yeah, so, and then there's another beach area in Tuckerton that they dredged these lagoons. I'm not sure about Tuckerton, but in Mystic Island, they started uh, dredging lagoons in 1950, late 1950s. And that's when you, you said you had a client that found um, like original plans for the developments and stuff, right? It is so cool because the original development of this area by the, the builder was a huge, huge amount of lagoons, and somewhere between the fifth, well, the late fifties and the seventies, it was stopped and protected. The wetlands were protected. So I'd say I should have shown you the map. Oh, that's right. I, I, we'll do that. Your house you is yours. Have to thank you. Crash. You're yeah. crash the house part, 100%. Um, no, but um, I'd say that they developed half of what they originally wanted to. In the beginning, they had a big, big uh, Olympic size pool. They had a golf course. People were coming from Philly and New York City. They were coming from North Jersey, all for vacation. You know. wow. And that's what Mystic Island, Osborne Island, and Tuckerton Beach are attracting. Yeah, because I was even a little confused when I was doing some of my own research too. I'm like, 
where are we? Like, <laughs> are we in Little Egg Harbor? And then I hear there's also Egg Harbor, isn't there? Yep, that's a common misconception. Egg Harbor Township is different than Little Egg. Yeah. I guess they just had eggs. We got the little eggs here. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, Tuckerton being kind of its own thing, but you can't get to Tuckerton without going through Little Egg Harbor, correct? No, 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 no. You go okay. through Tuckerton to get to Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Pretty much. Gotcha. Pretty much. I mean, it depends on how you come. Well, yeah, because technically, you're from South Jersey. Yeah, well, when you're coming off the, you're right, because then you go through New Gretna and you That's come right. off right, yeah. Yeah, right. So New Gretna is like a whole other, other thing. Those are my old stomping grounds too, with my friends out there. But, but overall, geographically, right? I mean, you could see Atlantic City from the other end of the bay, really. I mean, yeah. So we had, you know, a little bit of a gloomier, you know, kind of overcast day, so it was a little harder for us to see Atlantic City. But right off at the end there, uh, you can see Atlantic City, right? You see the fireworks, right? When they do some of the fireworks. You really we see see that, and uh, quite frankly, Fourth of July fireworks are the best ever in the state. Everyone blows off their, their fireworks. It's incredible. Yeah. 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 And because you guys are all raised up too, you can see them. I'm sure pretty, exactly. pretty nice as well. So. All right, cool. So we talked about uh, some of the history, some of the demographics. Um, we know that there's actually Revolutionary War roots here, right? Part of that was, was part of this too. Um, so tell us a little bit about, do you know, we always then kind of go into the, uh, the demographics, right? So we're located in Ocean County. Uh, it's the southernmost municipality in Ocean County. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the median household income at $76,410. Yep. Uh, population, and I believe this is just for Little Egg, not, maybe not including Tuckerton, but uh, the population is 21,350 people as of July 1st, 2022. And uh, Valerie, do you have some of the uh, real estate stats for us? I do. So in, 20, in the last 12 months, we've sold 455 homes here. And the average sell price is around three hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. What's kind of funny, though, is that in Mystic Island, property is usually much higher than that yeah. because that's more from the market. Yeah, but that's based on average sale price too. It almost sounds relatively affordable considering what you're getting and being so close to the beach, right? Absolutely. So if you want to buy a, so we all know that Sandy happened, right? Yeah. And. Good. I got two feet of water in my bungalow. My originally built three bedroom, one bath, and um, those still are available on the ground. But a lot of homes have been lifted on the islands, like we saw at my house today. So we're ten feet up in the air, which is great. So we, any other flooding that we get will be safe. But those homes on the ground, not that we're going to get. No, <laughs> never. Yep. That was, you know, the perfect storm, right? Right. Um, so you can still get a three bedroom, one bath here for uh, 330 350 in decent condition. And then the price is pretty much. Well, I was going to say, not to put you on the spot, but do you know roughly what it, what it costs to actually elevate the home and put it on pylons? So, I you mean, know, it depends. It building a new, a new house. It's yeah. kind of, right? Yeah. Well, no, what they do is they take the original house off the slab, they move it over to the side of the property, they come in and they put pilings down in the ground like 20 feet below, and that's your foundation, okay? The pilings are your foundation, like the ones you saw right. They go 20 feet down. And then they take the house, they put it back on the pilings, and then they build a floor, because it's on a slab, it doesn't have flooring, so they build the flooring, and now they have to repair all the um, all the damage that was done to the house moving in. The cracks in the sheetrock and stuff like that. So um, back in 2012, when we were looking at perhaps lifting our house, it, we figured about 70,000. Okay. Um, but I mean. Just given that as a viable option for people that maybe are finding something cheaper. And yeah. Find it. If you want to lift it. Yeah. 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 Now what's cool is you can close in the bottom part of the house where the pilings, you know, are up 10 feet and your house is up 10 feet, you can close that in and then have another little space. Right, right. Right in the garage, right? I know there's a lot of garage spaces mm -hmm. that are down there. Yeah. And I was pointing out to Scott the um, the vents, right? If you do ever get water like that, the flood yes. vents that, that are in there too. So that's actually, that was a really good question because in my mind, it was just you knock the house down and you build it. No, which obviously is an option, but you can actually literally move the house and lift it. So that's 
That's a good question. That's good to know too. So, um, okay, so yeah, we talked a little bit about the history already, and we wanted to give a shout out to. We always try to find someone notable. I mean, other than yours truly, who yeah. goes from Little Red Harbor. <laughs> um, we've got Gaetano John Matarazzo. So I gotta tell you something real funny about that. It's not actually when, here. No, when Stranger Things was coming out, we were hooked. Yeah. Totally hooked. And we, one day my husband and I are driving down the road and holy cow, there's this kid that's on Stranger Things. We're going, he really does live here. We this this is Dustin from Stranger Things, just saying. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Dustin, we could not believe it. And then we saw him at the theater. Stafford uh, Art Center, they have, you know, a theater there. And we'll see him once you see him everywhere, right? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Dustin, he's a fan favorite too on the show. He yeah. just has that, like, quality about him. Yeah. Him. yeah, so big shout out to uh, Gaetano. Um, and yeah, Stranger Things is awesome. I just, it's something about, like, that 80s, like, retro vibe that is just so cool about that show. I really, really gets me into it. So. All right, cool. Um, so I think that kind of covers the demographics, the overall. I think maybe just one thing just to touch on too, like you said, the different sale prices, right? And, you know, we're talking about the average sale price. So that means your absolute super house, your huge mansion, you know, beautiful waterfront house, which, you know, sells for over a million. And then you've got some of your smaller single homes, ranches, and mm -hmm. you've got some uh, mobile homes here, right, that account into that. So you've got a good range. Uh, and if you guys are interested in learning more about what that looks like, uh, you can reach out to us, we'll get you in touch with Valerie, or you can reach out to Valerie direct. Um, if we haven't mentioned my real estate agent with Kelly Williams, yes. so that's how we, like yes. I said, real estate conference, that's Love how we family. Family each other. And then reach out to Scott for getting that financing order and figuring out what that is. Mm -hmm. One thing that I think will probably also come up and a lot of people might ask as they're you know, listening to this, watching this, um, what is about flood insurance costs? If you're on the water, like what does that kind of look like? Just to get a number. So it absolutely uh, previously used to depend on elevation. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how familiar you are with it. So, okay. um, so right now in the Little Egg uh, Mystic Island on the water, usually flood insurance is somewhere around fourteen hundred and two thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. It will depend on the size of the house, of course, and. Um, whether you're full-time or you're vacation part-time. Do they not factor in the elevation levels anymore? You know, they changed those laws in, I believe, April, May of this year. I'm not real sure what the calculation is anymore, yeah. but it's not as much on elevation as... I remember it used to be that I knew a couple people up in Point Pleasant, so more north, um, that they were kind of forced to elevate their homes a minimum of, I think it was six or eight feet in order to be... Uh, eligible for a proper proper insurance or it was going to be drastically more expensive. Right, so my home off on pilings up at 10 feet, we just have flood, flood insurance because we have a HELOC on our home mm -hmm. and it's 700. Okay. okay. So if you're elevated, you don't even have to have it unless you have a mortgage on your home. No, yeah, of course. But if you're on the ground, usually somewhere in the tree. And it, it's funny because after Sandy, we were terrified. Our, our insurance actually, as a secondary home, came up to thirty eight hundred one year. Yeah, it was much. Yeah, well, they, but that's gotten more real estate. I yeah. guess it's always. I think home. the insurance companies are, without speculating, probably trying to make up for major losses that have happened too. So mm -hmm. yeah, but that's cool. It sounds like it settled down a little bit, and I mean two thousand dollars for insurance on a uh, on a short house. It's not bad. What do you think about it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, and definitely, you know, of course, always check with your insurance providers for making sure you get the adequate coverage, but that's a good ballpark range. Who knows, maybe we can get a, an insurance company to sponsor our podcast. I don't know. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. All right, so let's talk about uh, transportation and location, right? So as we mentioned, we're in Ocean County, um, and some of the towns that we have uh, bordering it, right? Obviously, we're in Little Lake Harbor, so it borders Barnegat Township, Beach Haven, Eagleswood, um, Woodland Township, which I'm not familiar with Woodland Township. Me neither. Okay, so we're not sure how that got in there. We'll have to double check on that. And obviously Tucker Lane is within the Little Lake Harbor. And I think it's funny because usually when we're doing these North Jersey towns, right, we're literally talking about like border. Like you can yes. walk to the next town. Yeah, right. one block over it. Beach so. Haven doesn't really border by water. Or by water. Water. But by water. Yeah. Very good point, Scott. 
by water you need. Uh, we usually leave our house and then within 45 to 50 minutes we're on Long Beach Island with our boat. Oh, that's what, so that's by boat when you're yeah. taking your boat across. So in the summertime, if yeah. you try to go to Beach Haven right. from Little Egg Harbor, it takes as much time. So. Well, I guess a question on that too for people that actually would own a boat and live out here. What do you do with your boat when you're at Little, uh, Long Beach Island? Are there public slips that you could just park in? Yeah. 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 You've got to pay for it. But right. yeah, I mean, a parking spot though, right? It's like. It's a parking spot. We go to Bird and Betty's, or you can park, park there for the day right? and walk over to the beach. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a great time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's what I think, you know, we, again, we're kind of up north, right? We're usually talking about transportation to and from New York City, right? This is a completely different thing. Yeah. We're talking about transportation by your boat to Long Beach Island, which I think is, is awesome. And I always tell the story for, not, it's not much of a story, but when I was growing up, you know, when you live up in northern Jersey, right, and you know you want to go to the beach, you got to plan it usually a couple days in advance, uh, right? Mm -hmm. You got to check the weather, everything, make sure that that's lined up so you can take off of work and, right. you know, someone walk, whatever it takes. And then, you know, you got to make it a whole thing. When I was growing up, you know, we used to wake up in the summer on a Tuesday morning and my mom would say, you guys want to go to the beach today? And we'd be like, yeah, sure, it's a nice day. And we would just get in the car and go. We want to be there in, you know, 20, 30 minutes. So, um, you know, we talk a lot about the location. Is there some beer here? Or the, uh, you must be working on the beer right now. Or do somebody uh, take the auxiliary yeah. beer and uh, plug the beer from the beach. But I gotta tell you something funny. You mentioning that, how you have to move. That was quiet. You mentioning that, so um, people watching the podcast today might go, oh, well, Valerie goes to Long Beach Island by her boat. Well, guess what? We've got the coolest place in Tuckerton called the Tuckerton Seaport. Now, the Tuckerton, oh, did I No, know? you're good, you're good. Let's jump right in. Tuckerton Seaport um, is a replica of many of the houses, probably, that they just brought them all in the center. They are replicas, though, right? There are, they're not replicas. Oh, they're. I do not believe they are. I think they're original, original buildings. Oh, wow. Yeah, I do believe they are. I think they have a combination. Except for the Tucker, the Tucker um, Lighthouse. Mm, okay. The Tucker Lighthouse is a replica it. because it fell into this. <laughs> you know that, right? I didn't know that, but. But what I was going to say was the point is during the summer they have a shuttle to Long Beach Island. For anybody, and I just think that is so incredibly cool that we're not talking about, you know, having so you to drive your car. You don't need to own a boat. You don't need to own a boat. And by the way, there are places to rent boats. No, yeah, we're gonna get into that because you had mentioned that, and I thought that was super cool. And I think we're, we're gonna, I think that's some of the added value, right? When you talk about it in general, and like we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so just as far as again, just kind of wrapping up transportation location. So we know we can either boat to LBI, which is awesome. Uh, or you can go to the Tucker and Seaport and you can take the water ferry, which will take you across as well. How long? That's about an hour, I think, right? I think it's between 45 minutes and an hour. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, so there's no trains here in Tucker and Little Egg Harbor, yeah. um, but there is a train station in Egg Harbor City that will bring you transportation to Philly. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, NJ Transit by bus uh, provides bus service between Atlantic City, uh, here in Atlantic City. Yep. Uh, the Five five nine route to Atlantic City. It's about thirty five minutes. That sound about right. Thirty five minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we always talk about it, right? We were talking about. I think it was in Denville. Um, how we see, like we don't go up north by like the distance or the mileage, right? Because it's deceiving. Because five miles could take you forty minutes <laughs> or an hour, depending on the day. So it's just it's always funny. We look at this and we see, you know. What is the bus? It's uh, 29 miles in 35 minutes. Those are usually not the numbers we see from here in New York City. From where we live in New York City, it's like maybe six miles. Yeah, and it's still take you an hour, hour, minute, minute, hour. 15 minutes. So, yeah. um, but with that, we still do just like to at least uh, include proximity to New York always, especially when you mentioned that a lot of. Um, North Jersey transplants even come down here, right? Absolutely. So yeah. just for perspective on that, we are just over 100 miles to New York City. It takes you just under two hours. I mean, you, pretty, you flew down here this morning. Yeah, so that was the other thing, too, is timing, right? It's like I left at 7 a.m. I was here by 8.30. Yeah. It was an hour and a half. I mean, 
when I was a kid, when I was like 10 years old, an hour and a half or two hours felt a whole lot, a whole lot rounder. So today I felt like I just walked or rolled out of bed and pretty much got it. So that was awesome. Yeah, it was an easy trip. So for anybody who's got it, has to go back and forth, you know, it's a Friday afternoon. The weather is not great here, so that may have had a little bit of an effect on it. But if you get up and out early, you can hit Parkway South and be down here in an hour and a half. Yeah. I did it today. So. Yeah. Uh, and granted, that was a little like, you know, kind of almost exit to exit, so I don't want to over set that. Sure. Uh, All right, cool. So let's get into some of the parks and recreation. So, Scott, what did we see when we first got here this morning? A lot more golf courses than I thought. Um, so, two of the ones that we were uh, coming across Atlanta's golf course. Uh, and quick shout out, that's actually what you grew up on, right? I grew up on the golf course, yeah. How yeah. did you? I love playing with Atlantis. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's not that you play? easy. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. And I've played uh, in many countries. And to tell the truth, that golf course is not that easy. Yeah. I mean, I went there for my bachelor party, so, you know, there's some drinks flowing, so maybe I can't truly speak. Golf is hard to begin with. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so that's where I grew up on Atlanta's golf course. Yeah. Uh, the other one, too, is LBI National Golf Course. Um, is that new? That was formerly known as Sea Oaks. It okay. was bought out by Renault Winery, or at least their group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of Renault Big wedding Winery. venue. It is very nice. That's a nice golf course. Okay. Yeah, that's one that I'll have to play. Normally, when I would come down here, because I'm very familiar with LBI, actually, my family's down there this mm -hmm. week. So I actually stayed there last night, so it's a quick trip here today. We get a lot of people that come from LBI playing the LBI National. I would. I always played Ocean Acres on 72, but this seems like it might be a, a course worth checking out. Uh, but in addition to that, Tucker and Seaport, we can kind of revisit there. You already touched on it pretty well. It seems like it had, um, are there like a bunch of shops and stuff there too? We, we had some good coffee spot. What was that called? Oh, Union Market. Yes. yes. Union oh, Market. it's very nice. Yeah, shout out to them. They were yeah. pretty good. They, they, they made me a latte. It was, it was really good. Really, really good. Excellent. It's not very good. No, no, but you know, and I, I really would like to say that my impression of the seaport is, particularly for children, it's got such a good combination of what it used to look like around here with Tucker's um, lighthouse, as well as the, um, the habitat, the Indians, the wetlands, because all of this will not where we are now, but Mystic Island's wetlands, the the animals, the wildlife, it's just gorgeous. It, it, I mean, it's very good. Um, the seaport has a very nice living Yeah, and it's funny, I remember when we were living down here, that's when it was all kind of, I think it was 99, 2000, that was right about when you know, I was getting ready to move up north. And I remember the whole, should it come in, should it not, that people weren't sure about it, and you know, like just one of those things that the town kind of debates. And, Today was actually my first time ever walking through it. Shame, a little shameful to admit, but it, it came in right as we were pretty much leaving, and it was, but it was pretty cool walking through it today. You could, I kind of got a better idea of what it. We didn't go the inside; we just kind of walked around the, nice. the outside. But. Okay, sir. No, that's okay. Uh, in addition to that, we also hit um, was it Freedom Fields? Yep. Uh, was that where we started today? That's where we started today. Okay. And from my understanding, that's where a lot of like uh, little league sports are played there as well. We got tons of soccer fields, baseball fields. Also saw a leashless uh, dog park. Yep. So I might take a, take a trip down here with my dogs just to let them run free for a little bit. That seemed really cool. Senior softball. Senior softball. I have play senior softball. Okay. Yeah, it looked massive. We were just doing a quick walk around there. That's kind of where we started our day, so we had a lot to get to. But um, I was pretty impressed driving in there. Just in there was a lot. Um, and other than that, there were a couple other. Uh, Little parks. I don't remember the names offhand. You could, you were driving, so you know better than I would. But those kind of like uh, end of the road spots. Well, so yeah. So we remember. I think we talked about how my experience in in Little League, right? Whether or not I would be the next Mike Trout, which we already said that I would not be. I think that was Denville again. We talked about that. But my Little League experience happened uh, right off of Radio Road. Um, the uh, that. Um, little baseball field there across from the, the fire. Yeah. Well, so it was very short lived, right? So I, it was a, a cold day in the, in the fall. I got hit in the eye with a baseball and never went back. So that's where my career began and ended. Yeah, it was, it was apparently painful because I keep talking about it, but it's just the third time I've heard of it today, so it's gotta be bad. 
but every time I drive past it, I think of it. But, you know, Valerie, I remember when we were getting ready for the call, you had mentioned and it's something that I never really thought about, right? And we're talking about parks and recreation and just the things that you can do here because Scott was kind of asking, like, well, what, why is it not as well known? Why is it maybe something that not as many people would maybe go to versus like a beach town like Long Beach Island or Point Pleasant or any of the other ones? Um, I had kind of said because it has, because it doesn't really have that like beach, beach beach, right? Sand, big waves, surfing, like that kind of stuff. It's a little bit yep. more lagoons, bays, crabbing, fishing, kayaks, yes. boat park, right? Yep. And then you had mentioned about how you can actually rent boats and stuff like that. So can you talk a little bit about just like that, like what somebody coming down here for a vacation would maybe do? Well, as far as running a boat, I do know you can rent one. I don't know the cost. I don't know the details behind it, but it's very, very easy to do. Um, but if you were coming down for vacation, like I did for many, many years, um, before I lived here full time, I had been here for 13 years, coming summer, winter, and everything. What I used to love was we would, um, on a nice warm day like today, even though, even though it's overcast, um, we would just go out and float in the lagoon. Okay. And so what's really cool, people are like, I don't get it. But in lagoons, the tide comes in and the tide goes out. And I always say, listen, the lagoons are cleaned. It's washed out twice a day. Yeah. You know? And we used to just float out there, you know, with a soda or, or beer and uh, just, just love the, the sun. Um, crabbing. Everybody's got crab traps and we would literally you could get 25 30 crabs in a couple of hours do a bowl boil and make crab cakes or crab dip um one other thing i i didn't hear you mention and i know you didn't go to was bass state park oh yeah so what's really cool is even freedom park where all the ball fields are there's miles of walking trails and it's really pretty Bass State Park, that's the one out off of stage room. Yep. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, we used to go to the lake. Yeah, and and there's a campground and you can go out there and, and hike for for um I'm talking about the one that's maybe closer than the than the further one, the lake. Oh no, the lake, yeah, that's right. true, yeah. Mm -hmm. And but you can hike for miles with your dog. Of course they should be on leash leash, but sometimes mine is not. But it's, it's glorious, just hiking nature, wildlife, the fowl. I never I never knew I would love ducks, and, and I even know the names of the different ducks. Bird watching these days, huh? But I'm glad you kind of jumped into that, too, because I think that would be a valuable question for a lot of people is, if I'm going to make this a vacation destination, or possibly even get this as a second home, what do I do when I'm there, right? Um, so if you're not buying something that's on the beach, what are your alternatives? So. I'm all for, you know, floating in the lagoon. I think that that could be a good alternative. And again, focusing back on what if I want a house, but I don't want to be a boat owner, right? Like some people don't want boats. So yeah. you can still find some entertainment just in your backyard by exactly. jumping in the lagoon. And then rent a boat. You're 30, 35 minutes south is Atlantic City. I've seen Ringo Star there three times. You know, Journey, Foreigner, I've seen them all. That's awesome. <laughs> And then 25 minutes north to Long Beach Island to the beach. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, again, that is something you kind of just touched on. But we're in the heart of the Pine Barrens. Like, mm -hmm. we're right, like, so it's very cool. Or, and I didn't, I don't I realize this now, but you have the, the beachy, watery vibe, right, where you're on the lagoon. You can crab, you can kayak, you can jet ski, you can do all these things. But to your point, you can also go right into hiking trails, and it's like, for me, the longer I've lived in North Jersey, the higher my blood pressure has gotten. Let's just exactly. say it that exactly. way, right? Like yeah. I was literally I driving know. down at seven o'clock in the morning, which is not peak rush hour, it's before rush hour. And as I get on the parkway, um, people are cutting, weaving in and out, cutting, driving fast, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And I literally found myself saying, I can't wait to get to the Brown River Bridge. Because I know once I get over that, things slow just down. slow down a little bit. And the further you get out, the closer you get to here, the yeah. more peaceful, the more you feel an energy change. Man, and I'll tell you, if you get, if you ever have the pleasure of stopping here at Pinelands, which I would uh, Pinelands Brewing, which I would highly recommend, 
Uh, sit out back, and it's at first, especially if you're coming from a city, whether it be Philadelphia, New York City, North Jersey, and you sit out back, it is almost so quiet, it's almost deafening. Like, it is almost like, and then, for the birds. Oh, of course, the birds <laughs> and the cicadas, right? You hear yeah. the cicadas? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's sometimes, like, I remember when I hadn't come down here for a while, and I came back and we sat outside. It was like I forgot. It was like I had literally forgot what it was like to have peace and quiet. So um, I think that's some, something that is um, worth mentioning here. So yeah, right? even LBI, right? You go there for like the beach and vacation, but there's traffic getting onto the island, off of the island. One way on, one way on. That's, that's why I'd rather be in my boat and go, go to Long Beach Island, maybe five minutes faster or slower, but I've enjoyed the boat yep. and the ride. Rather than stopping at 50 different lights to go from yeah. ship one changes, they all change to, to beach head. Yeah. yeah, it does seem. Yeah. One changes, they all change, but they always seem to change. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so we talked a lot about, about one, uh, Little Lake Harbor and talking it as being more like a vacation spot or like a touristy spot, mm -hmm. right? But what is, so now you've been living here full time since 2017? Yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me what is life like? compared to when you used to vacation to now? Like, what are some things that maybe somebody who is looking to relocate here uh, should know? Well, funny enough, and I don't know if this is what you want to hear, um, what my husband and I have noticed, and we kind of started to notice that probably around 2010, after we'd been coming here for four years, is that a lot of people are considering retiring down here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge. I think it shows that people like this area enough to consider it as a full-time residence, um, retiring full-time here. Um, and what does it feel like? Is that what you asked? Well, just, I mean, wherever this conversation may go, but, you know, I just feel like we're talking so much about it being a vacation spot, but it really is a nice community to live in, right? Exactly. So, and some... I, you know, I've assisted quite a few people to buy homes down here, and some people will say, you know, it's it's too remote. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what you're looking for. We've got a Walmart. I saw that. Did you see? You said it's time to we buy have, real estate down here. Walmart, Walmart comes in. It's a super Walmart. Yeah. So we've got a Walmart. <laughs> and if you need any other shopping, you've got it 20 minutes north to Manahawkin. Hey, listen, when I lived in Randolph up in Morris County, listen, I just drove 20 minutes to go anywhere. Right? Yeah. So, uh -huh. so 20 minutes to all the shopping, Costco and all that that you need. Um, but for me, it's how um, I had lived the rat race in Europe until my 40s. I really knew what the rat race in Europe was. I then came to, um, you know, North Central Jersey, where I did the, the American rat race for another, you know, 10, 15 years. And I, this is not the rat race. So if you want to come to find a place to slow down, enjoy water or not enjoy water, and enjoy the hiking, the, the Atlantic City, whether you're a gambler or you love the shows, or just the beach in Long Beach Island. I feel like we're snuggled right in between of, you know, everything you could be looking for. And, and me being such like an outside perspective for both of you guys, because you have like the adolescent aspect of having grown up here since you were, what, until you were like 13, yeah, 14? I was born, I was born in Atlantic City Hospital and I was here until 2000. So. Yeah, so wow. you're kind of giving me the younger perspective and you're giving me the perspective of, hey, we just moved here, you know, six, seven years ago. It's kind of cool to actually hear how what I'm hearing is that there is something for everybody, mm -hmm. but I think that it's also, yeah, we've been focusing so much on saying, hey, this could be a great second home area, but let's not discount that. You still had a great childhood here, right? And you, you were telling me like, oh, skateboarding down this street, and this is my Wawa, and things like, you can have home here. And, and to your point too, is that if you're tired of the rat race of North Jersey, which is probably one of a lot of, a lot of our listeners may actually be tired of, um, you could find home here. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it was, I, you know, was with my mom the other day, and I was asking her, like, you know, just trying preparing for this, and just kind of asking her, like, what was your perspective? Like, what did you like about it? And I thought what was cool, and um, what I thought was cool was, you know, where we live now, where my father's from, where we live, is Saddlebrook. It's a small town, so everybody kind of knows each other. 
Now, what she said was that Little Egg Harbor, although it's big mileage-wise, right? It's pretty big when you look at it on the map. Yeah. Um, she said it still had like a small town feel. Like it still felt like everybody, you know, I guess just kind of got along and there was like that community feel, which I know a lot of people are, are searching for after COVID, but I, I don't know that it's, I mean, would you agree? Is it still the same? Like, do you see, I mean. I, I do, I do. I feel like that, you know, I might go to the store and see people I recognize um, from my street or from church or from the, the, the gym, retro. Mm -hmm. We have everything you need. Oh my God, we haven't talked about the food yet. No, we're going to get into that. That's we're the best part. We're going to save the best for last. The Greek place. <laughs> so before we get into that, we just, we always like to, hungry. yeah, no. <laughs> um, we always like to go over schools. We go, now, for anybody who maybe hasn't seen the podcast, we always do say, you know, schools are subjective, right? And they're, yes. they're for some, everybody has their own opinion on what a good school is. Is it, or a bad school? Is it, big, you know, I, I don't want to overstate it because if you watch the show regularly, you know our take on it. Um, so we just kind of give the school ratings. We kind of give a little bit of how they're structured, right? So um, I went to George J. Mitchell Elementary. Um, wow. So I remember that school. It's right here on, uh, on um, was this 539 right yes. here? It's right, right up the road. Yep. Uh, so parents can get a couple of drinks before they bring their kids home. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then I remember going to um, Frog Pond Road, which actually we don't even have it here, but that's, so I guess, George Mitchell was kindergarten through fifth grade or fourth grade? Yeah, I forget. So look up the schools and how those work. But we'll just jump right. So we've got, that was, so, all right, we're going to time out here real quick. Um, let's just look at that. Let's just look up. Frog Pond? Yeah, George Mitchell. You know what? Actually, we're gonna, let's just, we're going to restart this. We're going to skip over that. So, okay. Um, all right, guys, so let's get into the schools a little bit. And just for anybody who maybe doesn't watch all the time, it, always do your own due diligence on the schools in the area. Yep. Um, so you've got different elementary schools and, and different grades here for sure. Um, check those out. But what I wanted to go over was the regional schools. So yes. you've got two regional, you've got a middle school and a high school, right? So I went up through junior high school, which was eighth grade, so seventh and eighth grade, uh, and then go to high school, which I unfortunately left right before high school. Um, we always just throw out the school rankings. They are three out of 10, um, which according to the grade school, right, that's probably not ideal. Um, but it's always relative, right, like we kind of said. So always yeah. kind of check those out. I always like to say, like, I know people who have gone to uh, different schools and they're doing quite well. So I still keep in touch with some people from here. So it's all relative uh, in that regard. So that's just a real word about the high schools and middle schools. But let's get into bars, restaurants, food, Valerie, uh, give us, come on, spill the tea, as the, as the kids say. Well, it's very funny because um, one of the places we like a lot is Dockside. Mm -hmm. It happens to be on the top of the list. Um, they have grown from just a luncheon place to now they're open at breakfast. I, it was breakfast and lunch. To breakfast all the way through dinner. They have bands on the weekend. It's right on the water just east of the seaport. So... The seaport's there, and literally a block or two down, by, by boat. Always <laughs> by boat. <laughs> is, Get rid of your cars. Um, dockside, yeah. And um, the other one that I was just alluding to by the um, retro fitness gym where I teach. Oh, do you? Oh, do you Peloton? Are you a Peloton or no? Uh, well, I, I teach uh, simulated Peloton because. <laughs> so what we do is we simulate, I simulate Peloton rides, um, been doing it for years, been certified since 2009, so yeah, yeah, yeah. but next door is Costa's Greek restaurant, and let, you've not been, no, oh no, my no. god, so it's real Greek food, the gentleman who owns it, Mr. Costa, he is amazing, and I guess he's a cook. And it's great food. So if you go, what's like the must have? Um, probably lamb, because a lot of people don't eat lamb down here, and that's very Greek. Mm. Of course, a little bit Greek salad. Um, hummus has hummus. The hummus is great, and then you have to finish it with their coffee. It's the real Greek coffee that you bring. They bring on a big platter, and it's it's the, the, the Greek stuff. coffee. 
That's awesome. And we were uh, when we were driving, we stopped at Stewart's. Stewart's from here. Few that less, I think, right? Right? That's so much fun. You know, and it was funny. We the owners actually came out. We got to talking to them. We got to give them a big shout out. They yeah, new owners. owners. I think they bought just about a year ago. Yeah, they said they've been. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and they were super nice. They and that's in the seaport. Yep. Yep. Right, yep. Right Again. by the seaport. Yep. And Take so there. Yeah, I mean, you've got the dollar side there, so you can yep. pull up. And uh, so they were really sweet. They were really really nice. And we we, uh, uh, we definitely it was. They weren't open yet. Yeah. Uh, we, we got there a little too early, but definitely would have may have to go back for. Uh, Something afterwards. Root beer floats, man. That's right. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Big part of my childhood. All right. So we have coasters here. What about the county? Uh, oh, the pine cone. Oh my gosh, I was devastated. So the pine cone was like a staple in my childhood. And I didn't know that. Like I talked about it all day long. We pull in and there's weeds that are three foot high. Nobody's been there in a year. It's close. Well, Rita's took over. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I did I see so. Rita's down the road. I might stop at Walmart, get a couple spray paint cans. Throw some eggs out. I'll come back. <laughs> Just kidding. If there ends up to be spray paint, I don't want to be responsible. I promise I do not mm -hmm. spray paint any of the God, why am I even saying these things? Anyway, all right, any other? Um, yes, the Sunset or? Seafood, funny enough, you also pulled it up. They, and it's rated 4.7. I didn't realize the rating. I mean, you kind of realize the place to go because the food is really good or not good. Four million cars now, and boats in the parking lot, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this one is really cool. You have to go down, so when you come off the parkway, exit 58, that's 539. You go east past Route 9, and all the way to the end is this great little sunset seafood. Um, it used to, uh, it was just rebought and turned around. The food is excellent. And what's really cool is most of these homes that have been lifted have been lifted 10 or 12 feet. This home must be 14 to 16 feet up on pilings. I mean, this restaurant. And the, the view out and you can see Long Beach Island. You can you can see the bay. It is at if you want to eat dinner on the water, that's the place. Sunset seafood. Sunset seafood. The the staff are excellent. I actually left um, a couple of weeks ago on Wednesday night, and I had to stop the waitress and tell her, you know, these young men that are you know cleaning off the tables and all, they they really care. I mean, you can see that they care. They're not like just, ah, you know, just, it was really. So start to finish, it sounds like an it, awesome, awesome experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Great. I love it. Yeah, add that to the list for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, and then we just talked about some of the public service, right? So, um, well, real quick before yeah. we do that, we yeah. also need to give a shout out to Naples. Oh, of course. Uh, pizza. 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 Oh, pizza. Oh, pizza. So, the best pizza. So, we, yeah, so, admittedly, we're pizza stuff. Right. Like, we can, so we were talking about it, so we stopped at, first of all, I gotta give a shout out to Uncle Jim. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people watching this know Uncle Jim, uh, he's, he's the man. He's got a, a very large network and it was funny because, so we talked about how, I kind of mentioned earlier how there's things over the years since I left that keep pulling me back here, right? I had a friend whose father bought a house down here. I helped do some of the like minor construction stuff, spreading out rocks and stuff like that here. And then as I got a little bit older, something else brought me back here and then uh, connecting with old friends. And then uh, my wife, Ashley, uh, her uncle Jim ended up buying a house in the like Harbor or Tuckerman rather. And it's, to me, that's just, it's, it's mind blowing. But we think we're pizza snobs, uncle Jim, Love you, ultimate ultimate pizza. Um, the guy had a big. He concurred on Naples. Well, we're not going to go there. He's, but got, he's got other opinions outside oh, no. of even this area. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like telling us to go pretty much back to North Jersey. So, okay. <laughs> all kidding aside, <laughs> but Uncle Jim also has a nice big setup of like a pizza stone in his backyard. No, like, no, no. he's got the a full pizza, pizza oven. oven. Yeah, <laughs> concrete made, made. I think some. Yeah, custom made. It's a whole thing. So. Okay. Uncle Jim, we love you, and we gotta throw a little grain of salt on your pizza ratings, and we, we were sticking with in town, so that's really okay, the that's right. that's We right. absolutely trust his judgment, but we definitely wanted to stay in town, so we hit Naples. So Scott- So you got a pizza. So we got a slice. We got a slice. I did. Yeah, that's slices. So Scott, break it down for me. Yeah, so uh, I think we collectively decided it was cooked right. It was just cheesy enough. I said it was actually, it was a good North Jersey slice as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I would say that in Little Harbor would be a place to hear you say it. Yeah, why does it gotta be North Jersey? But it's what we're accustomed to. It's what we're accustomed to, and I would say that it did it did taste like a few of the pizza places that we have up north. 
Um, you know, I've had some pretty bad pizza in, in South Jersey at certain times, but this place was great. Um, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. It was definitely more cheesy than saucy pizza, which is good. I like it a little more crispy and maybe a little more thin, but it was still very good. And I saw the chicken alfredo slice. I had to, I had to get yeah, it. How was that? It was good. You know, I noticed that and on the buffalo chicken pizza they had some really healthy portions of chicken. Some big chunks of Yeah, like they were like, well, it was like a meal. One slice was, was pretty much like a meal. So, um, Mystic Pizza, also probably worthy of I've heard that was a really good one. That's where I used to go as a kid. Um, Mystic we, Island Pizza? Mystic Island okay. Pizza, yeah. But we we got it there too. Yeah, we so didn't have Shout out to those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and let's see, so that was that. Anything else? So that was it with the pizza. Um, yeah, I mean, we can get into public service a little bit, so we know that, um, so they have volunteer uh, ambulance corps right yes. here, right? Mm -hmm. um, they have their own police department, so it's yep. not state, they have their own local, and volunteer fire department as well. Yep, there you go. Anything else, like what do you see, is it mostly, um, it's mostly public sewer here, right? We don't have a lot of septic, That's we don't right. have a lot of septic. We don't have a lot of septic. And it's public water, mostly public water, no uh, yep. wells or anything like that. Anything else? Anything else that would be unique to the homes here that maybe other parts of the country or world are different? I mean, I don't really remember being that way, but any special wetlands things? Well, or the thing that blew me away was um, because we were having this podcast, I decided to listen to um, or watch a video on YouTube about Mystic Island, and it just blew me away that back in the late 50s, early 60s, into the 70s, they had public water and public sewer and natural gas mm. to every single home on the water. Which is unique for that time. I, I think yeah. it's pretty unique because when you go to New Gretna or Galloway or towards Atlantic City as you're going south and west of here, you're gonna find septic. Right. Yeah. And what about like propane and oil and stuff, or is it? So you see a lot of natural gas out there too. We're not holding. There's it. also oil. Yeah, there's probably oil. for sure. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. probably some. It's, it's always like the harder it is to get to an area, right? The more rural it is, usually the more the better chance of having like propane or, or uh, oil. Or something. One thing I was going to say too that you just kind of brought up uh, um, something that might be notable to a shore town like this. Uh, you guys probably deal with a lot of tidelands claims. Yeah, we do. Okay, we so do. a lot of North Jersey probably isn't familiar with Tidelands claims, and you can correct me if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm inaccurate here, but basically, if you have a property that's on water, oftentimes if you have like a dock in the backyard, it goes over the water, which is technically protected wetlands, and it's owned by the state, right? That's correct. So essentially what a Tidelands claim is, is it is a um, permission to basically continue to have property that is on, um, public state land, is it not? Well, that's part of it. The other part of Tideland plans was during the 70s, um, in my understanding, this might not be perfect, so any experts okay. out there, please disregard, but basically they filmed, for instance, certain areas, okay, from the sky, right? They did video, photography, or whatever, and when they built Mystic Island area, and, and that's where time lines would come into effect because it's water, it's riparian rights, right? So anything that's water is in technical terms riparian. And these little creeks that went through the wetlands, what happened was we now dredged these wetlands and if a creek had originally been on any one of these these streets that were created around the lagoons. I mean, you gotta understand, this was wetlands. Right. I mean, yeah. I think, I was just asking my husband this morning, don't you think they brought in dirt? Because this is wetlands, it's moss, mm -hmm. it's, what do you say? Muck. It almost Muck. had to build it on something. Yeah. yeah, and if there was a little creek, and through the years, the, all of the grants to the government, had to be paid off for any waterways on a piece of land. Mm -hmm. And so we're almost over all of those right yeah. now because land, uh, pieces of property most so built up. have been sold and sold over and over again. But I have had a couple come in where the property hadn't been sold since the 60s and there was a little creek on the corner of that piece of land 
and now you have to get a grant to actually pay the government to, to own, that, own that piece of property. Yeah. So basically, All of it. I was going to say, I'm glad you touched on that because I think that's actually something important to note for a lot of people that aren't familiar with something like that, that sometimes it could throw a little bit of a caveat into the mix when buying down here. You know, yeah, it, but not often. It's, it's not often, it's but really it's not. something that sometimes I've seen, so I figured it was worth mentioning. Cool. No. Well, that's why you have to have a really good team. Mm -hmm. Shout out to good title companies. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a great one, so. Also looking for sponsors. So yeah, I'm just saying, there you go. If anybody wants some help, so. All right, guys. Well, listen. I mean, I need a refill on my beer here. Yes. Before we before we wrap this up, uh, first of all, Valerie, I just want to say thank you so much for, yes. for joining us. Uh, it's certainly it's been, been a pleasure. Fun. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and just learning a little bit more about you and just um, someone who we've uh, both my wife and I since we met you just we love you. We just think you're amazing. So uh, really fun person to work with. Scott, always always a pleasure. Uh, before we wrap this up, anything else that maybe we didn't touch on or anything that... Uh, Same way I always ask you when we, rent, when we end, uh, what is one reason you live here and what is one reason you wouldn't want to live here? Now, you did live here at some yeah. point, so... So, I mean, for me, honestly, this is a place that has always been in my heart. It's, it's where I grew up, it's where... Uh, it's a part of me, literally, it's a part of like who my identity and who I am. I was joking with you earlier when I was up when I first came to North Jersey and you know, um, some of our North city folk friends, whatever, I would like go into the woods or whatever and people would be like, what are you doing? And I would just roll around the woods and they wouldn't understand. Me. And it was just part of who it's I that was. Tiny it's the tiny in me and it just, so I've got a good balance now with both. But um, for me, one reason I would live here is just for the peace and quiet. Um, you know, I yeah, and just honestly, it's just it's a slower pace. Uh, there are the people here are just you know those little things like pull the door. How many people wave to us when we're just driving around? I, I thought you had something on your car or something because everybody was just. Oh, it's fine. We all wave at each other. And it's just it's that it's that community vibe. So uh, the only reason I wouldn't move here, and this is the one thing that Valerie almost didn't want us to touch on, the greenheads. So there is one thing I don't miss about Little Lake Harbor and this, this area in particular. It comes with the wetlands, right? It comes with, you've got the beauty and the nature. But uh, the swampy land, I guess it is, I don't know what it is, creates these horse flies. So if you don't know what greenheads are, uh, come they're on horse down. Flies. Come they're on horse. down. They're horse flies, they, but they're not horse flies. They're horse flies that bite. They do. Yeah, and they got like razor sharp oh, teeth. They do. What? Those things hurt. Yeah, so they, they hurt really, they're, God, they hurt when they bite. And the welts are huge, um, but I've shown him the black boxes that people have in there. Correct, their yards. where they're um, growing um, um, dragonflies. Oh, is that, that eat them? Oh, is that what they do? They do. Uh, I thought that was like a repel, like it drew them to the black No, boxes. those are um, for the dragonflies. They are multiplying the dragonflies that eat green heads. But come on. Yes. I don't think that's we, most of the time we have a breeze here, and the green flies or the gnats won't, you know, land on you. Uh, you are sitting duck if you go out to the bay in the boat. <laughs> but we use Irish spring soap. There we go. And That'll then work. it keeps them away. Irish spring soap. There you go. And something you mentioned about the gnats. So we have gnats up north too, but they don't bite. Huh. So <laughs> the gnats here are gnats are better than your gnats. <laughs> Oh, well, they are better if they don't buy because I'm not So what about you, Scott? Some, you've been here, you know, obviously you've been here for like four or five hours. Sure. So, but just on at face value, what's a reason you would or a reason you wouldn't? Uh, I would say one reason I probably just wouldn't consider moving here or, you know, wouldn't move here is just because, of course, it is an hour and a half to two hours from home where I do have so many roots and a lot of my business is there. So it would be kind of starting over in a certain regard. Um, but with that, with that in mind, it is something that we've been talking about as a potential uh, option for a second home, right? So I would, I would still consider that. And we one can of the do reasons. That for you. What was that? We can do that. For yeah. you. Well, we'll talk. Um, and one of the reasons why I would consider that for a second home is because, based on looking at home values, and you know, again, being biased towards Long Beach Island, having grown up going there every summer. Mm -hmm. The entry point there, you're talking a million and a half for That's just a, a normal, a, a normal sized home, yeah. where you could find, you know, a home here for in the four or five hundred thousands on the uh, water. On the water, yeah. So 
I would say that you're definitely in a more affordable price point here, um, with almost all the same luxuries that LBI has. And if it doesn't, you can work your way there in 20 minutes. Yeah. So Valerie, obviously you live here, so there are reasons you would live here. But from working with clients, right, when you, you know, people are looking all over, what are reasons that you see people do prefer to live in like Little Lake Harbor and Tuckerton? And then what's one reason that maybe somebody chooses another area over at Little Lake Harbor and Tuckerton? Yeah, I think for sure that people are looking to come here uh, mostly for boating. Okay. So you don't have to have a big boat. And it doesn't have to be a motor boat. It could be a kayak. It could just be enjoying the water and the serenity of all the wildlife. Um, I do know we have a lot, a lot of people coming from Staten Island and Philly and North Jersey. And the commute, um, quite frankly, every time I drove down from Morris County, it was like, that was that life, and this is this life. And it was, we'd open up the door and we'd go, yay, vacation. So um, I think boat owners love to come here. I think people that want to slow down and just enjoy relaxing. It is very quiet here, um, except if it's a fourth Or New Year's. New Year's has got some of the best fireworks too here. Okay. We don't go anywhere for Fourth of July. Yeah, I kid mean, yeah. you not. I mean, I just astounded, jaw dropping fireworks. But um, yeah, I think that that's basically it. It's the proximity to Atlantic City to Long Beach Island for the beautiful uh, beaches of Long Beach Island and the fun that you could have in Atlantic City and then just be right here with the water, on the water, with the boat or no boat and just relaxing. Fantastic. That was a great job summing it up. I think that was perfect. Oh, and one other reason I wouldn't move down here or I'm, I'm thankful that I is I would have been at Phillies. Oh man, I ran the chance of being Phillies and Eagles oh, and Flyers, because yeah, we're too close. Yankee. Oh, Yankees, oh, Giants, yeah, of course. Devils. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're not Eagles and Phillies. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I have to agree to disagree on some things. But <laughs> when it comes to hockey, I'd just like everyone to remember, that's our one state team. It's the New Jersey Devils. So, anyway. But all kidding aside, again, thank you guys both for being here. Uh, thank you to Prime Lens Brewing because they, they were great. They made sure they called us and sure were here, got set up in this nice, nice area here. And most importantly, their beer is delicious. So at this point, I think we're all ready for another one. Yeah. So thank you guys so much again. And uh, until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, if you, this podcast brought you value, uh, maybe consider sharing it to somebody who doesn't know much about the area. Move out somewhere. Uh, and if you'd like to do another town, or you'd like us to do another town, uh, drop us a comment and uh, we'll, we'll think about doing it. So until next time, guys, take care. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Cool. Good job, guys. That was fun. Okay. Thing to note, we've got battery. We're good. That's good. But well, we're getting a little low here, so. I feel like I'm All right. Can I see that picture? Oh, yeah. I can give you the actual, uh, oh thank you. Yes, I'll show you a couple. Job all done all around. Very good. I just get so nervous though when I do this, because I'm like, please tell me that everything right, and it works. <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, yay. You have to repeat everything. Not everything. We've kind of just taken the L on a couple things. What? Say that again? Uh, she said, have we ever had to repeat the entire thing? I think no. in one of the first episodes we did two takes. So, no, I don't know we did. Scotch dress?